What's happening, everybody? It's Chris with Lone Wolf DIY, and I cannot wait to show you guys all the new cool nifty features that I learned using Ubiquiti's Design Center. Let me tell you, man, they have really put a lot of effort into this software to make it as DIY and user friendly as possible. As I was doing my first build, I've done two builds so far, so that way you don't have to hear me stumbling over my words like an idiot, more than usual anyway. So with that being said, on my first build, there was this really convenient planning tips that popped up, and it's basically just a little tutorial with with some short informative videos to help you on your uh, network blueprint as you go. So with these tutorials and these really easy tips, there wasn't anything that I couldn't handle myself. I didn't have to go to YouTube and listen to that guy tell me his life story for two minutes after I've already watched the two full ads from YouTube just to figure out how to do something that would only take me five seconds in the first place. Why do you guys do that? Why do you guys have to tell your entire life story before we get started? You know what I'm saying? Like when I was a kid and I was living in Oregon, I had to get my library internet, man. My dad would take me down to the library. I don't have time for that shit. Do you? No? <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna quit my yammering and just jump right in. There really isn't a lot to this. You don't wanna hear me do this intro any more than I do. So let's just jump on in, man. Okay, so now we are going to add our project. So it's gonna be Har Bottle Brewing Company. And this is located in Tucson, Arizona. What I like about this is it's got an autofill feature in it. You get the product preference. You can either choose value or performance. This is not a permanent decision. And if you do want a piece of performance equipment, you can specify that during your build. I mean, Ubiquiti's equipment for one is light years ahead of anything that I was using or most people that I know are using. So I'm just gonna stick with the value. All that stuff is perfectly fine for me. Plus as a small business owner, uh, you gotta keep your overhead costs as absolutely low as possible. So with using Ubiquiti's networking system and having everything under one roof and being able to purchase economically priced equipment is great. Great for small business guys like us who need all the help we could get at this point. Give me some of that funds, Jeffrey Bezos. So we're gonna select office and it is between 2,000 and 5,000 square feet. He told me that in person. It's also on his blueprint. And if I just Google it, it usually will turn up on a service like Zillow and it just tells you exactly how many square feet it is. And his building capacity is under 100 people. I think he said it's around 50 or something. So we're gonna select the less than 100 clients. We'll hit next. Now, I noticed in the select solutions that we're about to go through right now that they are categorized a lot like your portal when you log in. You've got your network, you've got your camera, you've got your building security, and then you've got your communication stuff like your VoIP phone. So for the time being, we're just gonna stick with network and camera options. That's really all we talked about, but really, really cool about the software also is that it's saved always to your Ubiquiti portal. So you can always just log right back into where you left off and it's live. So you can make all your different edits that you need to. All of these things are not not permanent. You can go back after saving it and exporting your files and make the changes you need to, which is great. That's why I do everything on computers anymore. I'm tired of like my chicken scratch and erasers and notes all over the place. You can just come on here and make the changes you need to. All right, now we're gonna add our floor plan. Our floor plan is going to be the main floor, but I'm just gonna call it brewery just because uh, it's easier for me to identify. Your floor plan name is different from the project name. So the project name is just, you know, the reference, the title of the book. And then the floor plan name is gonna be something like basement, main floor, second floor, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna stick with brewery. And that's important because when you're running your cabling in your network, you need to have very specific details on each and every floor. And then I'm gonna show you how to build a tunnel so you can easily auto cable to those additional floor levels. So as you can see here, that really cool planning tip thing popped up that I was telling everybody about. Uh, tells you how to add a floor, set a floor plan height scale, draw walls and rooms. And really all you have to do is just follow along with those steps and you'll learn it. Just the first time you will learn it. It is so easy. If I can do this, you can absolutely do this. We're gonna go ahead and start with our ceiling height, which I know to be 18 feet based off of what they told me. And you can either choose uh, meters or feet. Is that meters? I think it's meters. Come on, America. We need to get with the program. All right, save. Now we're gonna do our floor plan to scale. This part's really important, although very, very easy. So I've got a point right here that says 23 feet. I'm gonna click on here and then it's gonna give me a tool that you can see right here. It says use left uh, click to start, yada, yada, yada. So I'm gonna go from this point right here 
to this point over here. And that's gonna give me 23 feet. Make sure to highlight the right one. You're gonna save that. Now my entire blueprint is to scale. Everything I put on here now is gonna be accurate. Okay, so now that we have our ceiling height and our floor plan scale all put together, um, you can always go back, I wanted to include this, you can always go back into your settings and change your project settings. So I can change the name, location, value, or performance tab. If it's an office building size, uh, how many users are gonna be using that? I can make the changes here. Uh, also, I can go to the members tab and I can send my project partners or my clients uh, an email invite to my project and I can assign them roles. So I can give them an administrational role where they can actually do edits to my project or I can just set it up so they can only view the project. So you can send it to your client and they won't mess around with your layout or any of the stuff you've done. And then of course you can just delete your project, which is permanent and you don't wanna do that. Plus you can just do additional projects by just going up here in the corner and selecting add new project, or you can go to all your other projects in here. And then if you need to delete something for whatever reason, maybe uh, you've got some bad chemistry with this client or you don't wanna be associated with them at all, then you can just go ahead and delete it in here and hopefully the FBI never finds out. We'll get back to our Harbottle Brewing Company and we're gonna go up here and this is gonna be all the tools we need right here to get started. Before we start putting in all our fun stuff and jazzing up the whole blueprint, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down our walls. So we'll go to the wall tab in our little hammer construction spot and you can choose two different types of the draw wall. You can either do the wall tab, which is just line by line individually, uh, building it piece by piece, or you can choose the room tab which gives you just that perfect square to work with, which just cuts time down quite a bit. So let's just start with the standard wall tool that we're gonna draw by hand. Now you can see right here the details in the wall that they have already calculated. It tells you the decibels that it calculates uh, for the outer, inner, and divider walls. So let's start with our outer walls. And it's as simple as click and drag all the way around your blueprint left click, left click, hold down click and drag, left click, left, hold down left click and drag, and then just finish it. That's it, that's as easy as it is. So now our exterior walls are all mapped out. I don't have to worry about doors or windows or any of that stuff. All right, now let's do the inner walls. And you can see here, wood panel and other light partitions like drywall. So we're gonna build one room individually. So let's just start with the office here. I'm gonna build it right off of that back wall and then do all my left clicks. It's as simple as that. Now I came up a little bit short, so if you just continue to right click, you'll get that standard black mouse cursor, and then you can highlight the wall that you did, and it'll give you a few different options. You can either delete the wall, you can come down here and change the wall type, uh, so you don't have to redraw the wall. You can just switch it from exterior or interior or the divider wall. And then you've got these other points. You can either draw a wall, a wall point from that exact spot or you can add a little creation point. And that allows you to click and drag and to move that line in any direction you want for any kind of specialty shaped room. Okay, so we'll delete that. We got our inner wall. We'll come back up and we'll complete that right way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the room tool. So let's select our inner wall and we're just going to come down here into the tank room and we just hold down, left click all the way across. I'm going to overlap it right on top of the exterior wall and it automatically makes that exterior wall the primary wall. So it's just very easy to lay out. Okay, so we got all this storage and everything. So we're gonna click like so. And then we have our bathroom. So left click, and bring it all the way over here. It's like that. You can see how these walls are uh, side by side. Let's see what happens when we delete a wall. Yeah, so there, I deleted a wall. Now I just have one wall in that space. 
I've got a wall in between the bathroom I want to put in there. I'll go to the wall, grab the inner tool, and I'll just create my manual lines here. A little bit of a wall extension so I can just build right off of this point. I'm just going to make it easy. Click on this point, click like that. It's going to be an inner wall, and then just like so. And automatically is going to add that together for you. The important thing is, is we're trying to figure out uh, how strong our AP Wi-Fi signals are gonna be through these walls. So right here where you're coming in through past the bathrooms are these really big, beautiful glass doors that lead you into the brewery. So that's gonna be more of a divider wall. And those are important because it's gonna correctly calculate the zone and the distance of your APs because it can go through that divider wall. Okay, I'm just gonna fill in all my empty spaces here. And that's it, that's all there is to it. So now we get to put in all the awesome goodies and stuff and really maximize the performance of our network inside of this blueprint. So we're gonna start with our rack. That's our central point where our UDM Pro and our switch is gonna be. I'm just gonna do the existing rack because we're doing a fairly small application and he doesn't have a server room or anything like that. He's just gonna be placing it inside the office. Okay, so now we have our rack. So you can select the rack and you can either duplicate the rack once it's got all of its equipment in there. If you have a second or third story and you just wanna replicate what you already have, you can do that. You can delete it or you can go to the open rack sidebar, which is just a quick way to get to this tab here. So I like to keep my rack on auto and I don't do anything else because once I start clicking and dragging all the equipment I want onto the blueprint, it's going to automatically tell me or suggest the equipment I should be using to power my network. So that way you get exactly what you need. You don't have to buy anything you don't need. And it's just set up so easy that you can just get started on the project. We're just gonna get started by putting in our access points. So we're gonna click here. You can see up here at the top, you've got two different tabs like you did when you started. So if you want a performance AP or the value AP, we're gonna be hooking him up with the Unify 6 light access points. So we left click. You can close this side menu like so, and we're gonna put one AP in the tap room for all of his clients to connect to, and then we're gonna put one AP in the brewery area, so that way he has a good connection when he needs to get any of his work stuff done in the back. So this perfectly segues into the next thing I wanted to mention, which is the fact that this software allows you to set up two Wi-Fi networks, which you really should do. You don't want any clients or strangers being able to connect to your business Wi-Fi and then mess with all the whatever information i don't know i'm not a hacker <laughs> the other network should be for your clients so we're going to set that up in the tap room and that way you can adjust all the settings and everything for people that are connecting to it so we've got our ap's placed now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our cameras so once again value your performance tabs we're going to be hooking them up with the protect camera g4 bullets so left click he wants one that's facing the front door and then he's going to want one in the back of the tap room facing the back door where he gets all of his deliveries. Plus you don't want anybody sneaking in there getting free beer, right? Like me. I didn't steal this beer, I bought it. And I tipped, I gave a tip and I bought that beer. No, you know what? I didn't buy that beer from you guys. I take it back, I went to Total Wine and I bought a four pack of your beer because it's that good and it gave me an excellent buzz for 16 ounces, right? This is 16 ounces. Uh, but hey, in, just in case uh, anybody's listening to me over there at Total Wine, don't put these guys' stuff on the bottom rack. This is better than half of this swill you guys sling off the shitty ass, just contaminated shelves of your garbage ciders and other beers that shouldn't belong anywhere near my body. So we're gonna hook them up with one more camera and that's gonna be the Protect G3 Instant Camera and we're gonna be setting that up behind the register. So the little G3 Instant Camera is gonna connect to that new AP we're gonna put in the tap room via Wi-Fi. All right, so we have that in place. Let's see, what else are we gonna do? We've got access, VoIP, and even LED options as well. But we're not gonna worry about that. We're just doing cameras, AP, UDM Pro, and his switch. Check this out, man. We're gonna go to the Auto Cable tab. Watch on my blueprint. You'll see all the lines connect between the equipment. So what that does is it tells you each and every connection, how much length you're gonna need. You can sit here and change the type of cable you're gonna use. This here is the little GPS. So it tells you where that piece of equipment is inside that building. And it might not be much use 
to my little project here. But if you're doing like a big hospital or a school or some giant corporate building, you're absolutely gonna need that tool because if you've got like 20 floors you're working with and you need to find that one AP somewhere inside that building, that GPS button is gonna be so helpful. Now the one hang up I did have with the auto cable feature is that it uses the path of least resistance. It just kind of spider webs directly to that piece of equipment. So I have a drop down ceiling here and more than likely I'm gonna have vents and all kinds of other obstacles I'm gonna have to work around. So I'll show you how to run a manual cable. So once you save the auto cable, you'll notice that all the lines have turned white and you, you can't do anything else. You can't click on any of these cables or anything. So you just close this sidebar and once you do that, you'll see all the lines get their color back. And you'll notice that as I move this cursor over those lines, they turn green. It tells me exactly how long that length is. I can left click on it and delete it or I can build a point off of that. I'm gonna highlight the line. I'm gonna put in this create point and I'm gonna see if I can move this cape. Look at that. Wow, that was easy to use. And it tells me the new length. Wow, that is so cool. So cool. I didn't even know you could do that. So let me show you the other way when I first started. You can go to your cable tab here and you've got existing ethernet and then you've got these specialty cables. So you can click starting from your rack and you can do run your lines however you need to and you can see how it's calculating what I'm gonna need. So I really like this other way, so let's do the same thing we were doing before. Click here, I'm gonna add that point. Now I'm gonna move it, oh man, that's so cool. That is so cool. So I'm gonna do all of these pretty much the exact same way because I wanna make sure that I have enough cable to move around all of those obstacles. So this is gonna really help to give me a little extra slack so I can avoid that because there's nothing worse to have go back to your project and look super unprofessional and be like, you know what? I was two feet short on my cable. Why didn't you know any better? Don't you have this free, excellent, amazing software that's supposed to figure it out for you? That's what my client would say to me. So we just click on this button down here with the little slide levers, and that's gonna give us all kinds of different things we can do. So we have the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency tabs, and when you click on those, Look at that. So you can make sure that your equipment is placed in the most optimum position. M optimum. And check this out. So with that being said, you can take the AP and you can drag it wherever you need so that you can really make sure you're getting the most out of it. You can switch between the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz and you can see the obvious change. It's just amazing to me how much of this is automated. It's all kind of calculated for you. You just fill in the little easy blanks and then it's just doing it all for you. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out our cameras. And what that does is it shows you the angle in which the camera is being turned. And it also shows you how far your field of vision is. And the quality of that field of vision is shown on the legend down at the bottom of the screen. The wall opacity, you can turn that down. And what that does is it allows you to see the blueprint underneath without all the walls that you've drawn on top. Now the plan opacity, when you turn that down, is very cool because then you just see the lines you've drawn. You can click and drag these around wherever you need them. Everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna put my settings all back. Oh, and I also wanted to point out if you need the icon sizes larger, like if you're like me and you need one of those like jitterbug phones so I can see the buttons because they're all gigantic, this is what you need to do. So you take your little slide meter there, you'll move it up and you'll get that larger icon, which is very handy for two reasons. One, so you can see it, but also if you'll notice around the camera here, there's this little turquoise bar. And what that does is it just kind of demonstrates the angle of where the camera lens is facing. And sometimes that can be hard to get to when it's a lot smaller, uh, as I will demonstrate right here. I just like to have that turned up all the way. I'm sure if uh, I had a lot more equipment in there is a lot more concentrated. The smaller icons would be a lot more convenient. Okay, so that looks great. I am very happy with that. So next step, we're gonna take a look at our topology and that's gonna kind of show the network tree of connectivity between all of our equipment and we wanna make sure that it's all streamlined and all connected appropriately. So we'll check that out. We can click on that and it will expand the tree wherever we are looking for that equipment. 
it shows the price of the equipment. You could turn that off with the slide button down at the bottom if you want to show your client or something and you don't want them to see the price because you're planning on really gouging it up without them knowing. So everything looks good. I'm happy with the topology. Now the next step is to take a look at our materials list and it lays everything out for you. It tells you the price of it, it tells you its availability, if it's in stock, and it also gives you the option to replace a piece of equipment if it isn't available, or if maybe there's an alternative to what you have. So for instance, you have the Unify 6 light access point right up here on top, and then it gives you an option for replacement. And it gives you all these different pieces of equipment that may be able to use in lieu of the light access point. Lou, take, take, need to use the Lou. So down here, you'll see that our G3 instant camera is not in stock. So we'll click on the replace and that will give us a suggestion of a equivalent piece of equipment. So I'll click on that, approve, and it automatically adds it to my materials list. But not only that, it adds it to our build as well. So you could see it here in the topology. And then if we go all the way back to our blueprint, it's right there, right in the corner. So everything's done. We're pretty happy. Should we make our purchase now? Not quite yet. I always like to talk with the client first to make sure that all their needs have been met and they like the placement and they like the equipment that's there. So now we can take a look at our rack and here's what I was referencing earlier that is so cool. All I did was lay out my equipment and then I did the auto cable and the software told me the equipment that would be best for the network that I laid out on my blueprint. How amazing is that? Some of this equipment I didn't even know about. Like right here, you got this patch panel. I don't have one of those and I'm not even sure what that does. And then here it's got a 16 PoE switch. I usually just use a 24 PoE switch. So with this setup, it might be giving adequate power, adequate data, pricing, more economic pricing. And since I'm a beginner at all this networking stuff, the fact that it just tells me exactly what I'm gonna need and it puts it in my shopping cart and I just hit pay and it's sent to the job site, it's all so amazing. So right here, you've got the auto checked. And what that does is that's gonna automatically tell you exactly what equipment that the software feels is the best for your network. You can turn that off into a manual setting and you can remove this equipment if you don't like it. Maybe you do want to add that 24 port switch. Maybe you want to add a redundant power supply. You can do that. So you've got the slots here on your rack. You're using four of 24. It shows you how many PoE ports you have and it tells you the power requirement for your network. So once again, I've hit too many buttons and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and recheck that auto slide and it's gonna put everything right back where it was. So that looks good, what's next? Well, I think it's time to get the client's perspective on the build and see what they think before we do hit that buy button because that would be an absolute pain in the butt ass if they got this stuff and it ended up being not what they wanted or they wanted something else. Everything has to be perfect. If you mess up, they're gonna ruin your life. They're gonna cancel you. So with this software, it gets you as close to perfect as you possibly can be. And for me, I like to give my customers that kind of experience because as a small business, you wanna make sure that the word of mouth that you're getting out there is, is good to hear. Little, little side story here. So my company that I have been working on for the last 15 years only has seven reviews on it. And thankfully they're good reviews, but it only takes that one person to piss off for them to just give you a bad review and just completely throw off your income and the way your business is operating as far as trust within the community and all that garbage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and export that and we can select what plans we want depending on what floor plan. So we can do the basement, main floor, first, second floor. So we're gonna go ahead and just do all plans because it's gonna include my brewery plan already. I'm gonna include that rack view so they know what equipment to be expecting and they know the requirements uh, that their network is going to need. And then we're gonna go ahead and show him all of the coverages, the 2.4 and the five gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency and also the camera ranges. All right, let's hit export and see what happens. Okay, so here we go. We got the design center PDF and there it is. It's all done. So we got our brewery layout and it shows all the equipment. It shows the 2.4 coverage the five gigahertz coverage, and it shows all the camera ranges. And then right there at the bottom, it shows the rack and all the equipment and all the requirements. So that's it, everything's finished up. I'm gonna put this in an email and send it over to my friends over at Harbottle, and I can't wait to hear what they have to say. So it's gonna be 
it's going to be all ubiquity, no other devices besides the cable modem, and then that's it. Correct. And there's no subscriptions or any of that stuff. We just give oh, you the man, hardware. Yeah. So we are so stoked. Oh, me too, man. I can't wait to get this set up. I've been having a lot of fun with this. And I'm, I'm thinking about replacing my, my home internet with ubiquity now. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I can definitely help you with that. I would love to. Yeah, I, I kind of want to do a smaller version of what we have set up at the at Har Bottle. Um, <clears throat> like with a couple, like with an access point. I don't need, I was only going to get one. But I have, I'm a, I, I, after talking to you and your, 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 your wife, I'm like, you know what, that seems like a better fit. I can run all of this. So I'm, I'm really considering like swapping everything out of my house for the exact same, like very similar to what you've done here. Very cool. Dude, it's so fucking easy. You could do this for yourself and, and it's, it saves uh, unreal time and money. Everything's automated. All you're doing is drawing walls. That's all you do. It's all done for you. It's, it's insane. Oh man, I am really looking forward to it. Yeah, man, let me send this your way and uh, let me know what you guys think. And if you want to make any edits, let me know because I can, I can adjust anything. It's all live, so. Perfect, that's fantastic. All right, Sam, good chatting with you. All right, man. Likewise, all right, man. seeing all this stuff, man. Thank you for all your help and all you've done. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. All right. See ya. Bye. And you heard it, everybody. He's so into it that he wants to do it in his house himself. So I haven't even gotten anything plugged in and he's just watched videos and he's kind of just been involved in the setup and he's just as excited as I am to get this going. So now that I'm waiting to hear back from the Har Bottle guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record a second video and I'm gonna try to do this build as quickly as possible and I'm gonna time myself just so I can show you how fast you can do these builds even with limited knowledge of the software. I've only been working with it for two days. This is my third build now and I am very confident that I can get this done pretty quickly. It really is crazy how much time and money and effort this software saves you. I could build and have this all ready to go, I feel, in under five minutes. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to record a real quick video and then I'll make sure to include the link at the end of this video here. So that's it everybody, that's how easy it was to lay out my own network. I didn't have to pay some guy to do it, I did it all myself. I can go in and make any kind of edits that I need to and I have no experience in this and I was able to do a complete network build all the way up to ordering the exact materials I need and having it shipped to the job site. So all I have to do is worry about it getting installed properly and make sure the client's happy. I know I'm happy with all this stuff. This is great. If you liked the video and you liked how easy this was, please go back and check out some of my other videos. If you need to know how to hang up an AP, you need to hang your access or your cameras up, I've got all kinds of really short, hopefully funny videos to help you with that. So so thank you so much for checking out the channel. Please like and subscribe. And hit that notification thing in the corner. That helps me out more than you could possibly know. Plus, I want to see you come back. I want to see your pretty face. I want you to see that next video so you can see how fast I can put this together. Thanks again for watching and have a nice day. I was going to open this, but it's warm.